Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the different types of poetry. Um, poetry, as you know, is a condensed form of literature. It's, it's a compact way of expressing a story and expressing emotions, but there's different ways of presenting this. There's different forms. Um, in the last lecture video that you had, we talked about the different, uh, like certain terms and certain devices in poetry, like end rhyme, internal rhyme, uh, stanzas, those, those types of things. Today, we would just want to talk about the different types of poetry. Um, what you see here is Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, thou art more lovely and more temperate? Um, this right here is a sonnet, um, and sonnets are presented, their form is very specific, uh, just like a haiku poem is very, uh, or written very purposefully, um, just, or a lyric, uh, it, that's written differently. So we need to kind of identify the different types of poetry. Um, so when we look at our poems, we could say, oh, this is a sonnet, or this is a ballad, um, and we'd be able to kind of differentiate between all of them. So with that being said, um, make sure that you have a page of notes. There will be a quiz over uh, the types of poetry. Um, you guys can add this to your poetry terms notes if you would like, or if you want to do a completely separate piece of paper, you can do that. So take a moment to pause, get your paper set up. Um, that will get you the credit that you need for the day. Um, but what you have here are poetry types. So if I look at this, and I'm going to go through this, and you guys can mark down your notes and pause the video wherever you see fit. But poetry types really relates to the distinct way the poem is written and presented on the page. So we had talked um, earlier about poet, like shape poetry, and it's in the shape of whatever it is. Um, I showed you guys this poem from before. There's been a death in the opposite house. And the way that the poem is outlined gives a very distinct um, feeling to the poem. So we always look at the poem's form. So let's say I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to look at this poem, Meeting at Night. There's two stanzas. Two stanzas is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six lines right here. And then the second stanza is one, two, three, four, five, six. So two stanzas of six. I need to understand what is the meaning of the way that this poem is presented? What is the form that I see? Okay, maybe I read the guitarist tunes up and I notice that one line is longer than the other and it kind of begins to go back and forth in a sense, right? Um, what about the hound? Um, looking at how slim this um, poem is presented to our readers. So looking at the poem's form is how it's written and presented on the page. So let's talk about the different types. And I'm gonna go through the, these slides and then I'm gonna have you uh, take a moment to go to the poetry, poetryfoundation.org, what you can do, type in is, so let's say I type in a ballad and it just automatically comes up. There's all these poems for a ballad. So I'm gonna click on, let's go down to Conrad Aiken. Let's see what poem he has, okay? So here's his poem, a magazine of verse. This is a ballad. That's how it's written out. I'm gonna take a moment to look and analyze and figure out what it's like. Then I'm gonna come up here and maybe I wanna type in a haiku and work with a haiku poem, okay? So let's do, look at this. Here's one, here's one, here's one. Forms are different for haikus, but I'll get to that in just a second. So. The first type of poem that we're going to discuss is a ballad poem. These um, tell a story similar to like a folktale or legend that often has a repeating refrain. A refrain is like when you listen to a song, it's that one, uh, like almost like the chorus, it's the refrain, it repeats itself. Um, usually ballads are sung, they're played with music, they're all often about love. Um, it's essentially the best way to present a story. So if you're writing a story, uh, or excuse me, if you're writing a poem that 
has like a middle, a beginning, middle and end, you would use a valid form. Okay. Valid forms uh, present a story. They present characters, a situation, conflict, um, and you would do that in valid form. Okay. So that's the first poetry type that you would need to know. The second poetry type is a haiku. That's what I just showed you over here for the haiku poems. They are three lines and there's certain syllables that happen for each um, line. So to count syllables, you guys did that long ago, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Um, if you were to do that is haiku poetry is a Japanese poem composed of three unrhymed lines of five, seven and five syllables. So you'll have five syllables here, the piano man, the piano man, right? Is stingy at 3 a.m. His songs drop like plum. So that doesn't rhyme. And we've got um, five syllables, seven syllables, and then five syllables again, okay? Um, I took uh, creative writing class in college and we had to turn in so many haiku poems every week. I ended up, it was, you just had it. I wrote one about a refrigerator because it had enough syllables that I didn't need to do anything else, but they're really short, concise type poems. Okay. Um, the next poem is a lyric poem or lyric poetry. Lyric poetry consists of a poem such as a sonnet or an ode, okay, <clears throat> that expresses the thoughts and feelings of the poet. So the term lyric is now commonly referred to for words of a song, okay. Lyric poetry does not tell a story which portrays characters and actions. That would be a ballad. The lyric poet addresses the reader directly, portraying his or her own feelings, state of mind, um, you get a better feel, uh, uh, you get a stronger emotional connection with a lyric poem than you would a ballad poem. Okay. Ballad poems are strictly telling a story. The lyric poem does not tell a story. Okay. <clears throat> so lyric poem consists of a, uh, of a poem such as a sonnet or an ode. Um, these are longer. So let's take a look. You guys saw the sonnet, uh, Shakespeare sonnet. Let me Type in the word ode. There's a whole bunch. Let's uh, go to, what is this one? Henry Timrod. So here's his ode. Sleep sweetly in the humble grave, sweet martyrs of the fallen cause, though yet no marble column craves the pilgrim here to pause. Wow, there's a lot of internal rhyme. There's a lot of ending rhyme. There's a, definitely a rhythm and a, a, a metric beat to that. Um, he is obviously stating for some people who have fallen, who have passed away. Meanwhile, your sisters for years, which hold and trust your stories, tombs. Yep, we're talking about the dead. So this is an ode to someone of the past, someone who has done something um, uh, memorable, okay? Oh. I'm in the way. I'm always in the way. Sung on the occasion of decorating the graves of the Confederate dead, the Magnolia Cemetery in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, good to know. A little history lesson there too with the ode. So that's a lyric um, poem. So actually, let me, I typed in lyric. Let's see. Ooh, tons of poems. Let's go to... Let's go to the first one, Alan. What does Alan have for us? So here, first flakes of winter seen through glass of a train that takes me to school. Wren confused who sings at night in the glade as I, and I wake glad to be uncertain where I am. So yeah, my child chanting himself to sleep, I do not turn the page of my book. Each day ending like this, my hand in hers as we accept our time for dreams in the landscape that with the bridge keeps its place all night. I drift into the I love poetry simply because I love words and the way words express things. So I'm always fascinated the way how people put words together. Um, one of my uh, 
good friends. He's an actual published poet. Um, and I'm just fascinated by how he takes these words and he just stitches them together and creates just beautiful imagery. Um, I'm, I don't like every poem because some poems are like, what's happening here? But I just really am enthralled with how people piece poems together. Anyway, side note, side note for you. So you have in your notes, um, ballad poem, you have haiku poem, you have a lyric poem. Um, the next one that we have is sonnets. You guys saw that from Shakespearean sonnet uh, 18 that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Um, this is normally like 14 lines or longer um, and usually has a couplet down at the very end. So it'll have the 14 lines, it'll have a space, and then the couplet is there to kind of just add on to it. Um, there's other types of sonnets. An Italian uh, Petrarchian sonnet is divided into two quatrains uh, and a six line sasset. So for you, you guys don't need to worry about this right here. I need you to just know that a sonnet is an English, uh, which is like a lyric poem of 14 lines um, that usually ends in a couplet. A couplet is two. Okay, so that's what a sonnet is. So if I take you back to... Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? That's sonnet 18. Oops, where'd it go? You'll notice that there's 14 lines and then there's a couplet at the end, couplet meaning two. So the, normally the couplet will rhyme together and then everything up here uh, um, has a different pattern, okay? So that's a sonnet. Let's make sure that we get the definition for sonnet down. We got one more, which is a free verse. Um, a free verse doesn't mean that you just like freestyle through it. Free verse um, is allowed for a break in the traditional poetry. Um, it's composed either of rhymed or unrhymed lines that have no sit, fit uh, metrical pattern. So a free verse kind of breaks up the rhythmic portion. Um, this is different than a blank verse. Um, but a free verse breaks the traditional metrical pattern that set forth um, that you wouldn't that you would get in like a sonnet or an ode or a lyric poem. So for free verse, um, let's look up an example right now. Free verse. Free verse is non-metrical, non-rhyming lines that closely follow the natural rhythms of speech, regular pattern that flows. Okay, so let's say free verse again. What is this? Let's see if this is a poem by Robert Frost. Oh, this is a, a critique. This woman is uh, analyzing um, a Robert Frost poem. We'll actually take a look at some Robert Frost. Others taught me on having knelt with the well curbs with the wrong light. Sing deeper now in the well for the water gives me back a shining surface picture. Me, myself, in the summer heaven. There isn't much, there's some internal rhyme here, but you can notice that if I just read it out, looking out the wreath of fern and the clouds puff once when trying with a chin against my well curb. Yeah, that would be a free verse, just a casual conversation, telling a story. Um, I will say that for free verse, there is a point where it cuts off. So you do get a point where it's the the line and then you would move down to the next line. So it's not like writing sentences across the page. Um, you'll notice here that um, there's real no punctuation until this part right here. Um, and so this is all one sentence, but the punctuation breaks it apart and then the lines break it apart specifically where the emphasis needs to be laid. And that's kind of how it becomes free verse and very casual and speech-like is that it's just kind of written out. Because when you talk, you don't think of punctuation. You don't think of where your sentences are. You project based upon what you're trying to communicate. Okay. So all of those, ladies and gentlemen, are the terms that we need to know. So for this, you've got ballad poem, haiku poem, lyric poem, sonnets, 
and Freeverse. Okay. I would also recommend uh, maybe getting a solid definition for Ode. Um, Ode is like a dedication to the dead. Ode is uh, for someone who has passed on. Um, that's different than a eulogy. A eulogy is something that is done um, at a funeral as where an ode is, is kind of like for a greater audience. Okay. So with that being said, make sure that you have all of these poetry types. Um, take some time to go through poetryfoundation.org and look for some examples of these types of poems. So if you want to go back to haiku and read through some of the haikus, go for it. Um, if you're still confused on what a sonnet is compared to a lyric poem, go ahead and look up some examples. Um, take the time right now to kind of process and make sure that you've got all these different types and that you understand them. Um, there will be a quiz over the poetry types, so we do need to make sure that you understand what they are and how they're different um, for each of those. Okay, let me know if you guys have any questions or concerns. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.